Hey guys, Danny Johnson here and today we're looking at the DeWalt 60 volt max cordless grinder with kickback brake. Uh, this is model number DCG414B and it has a lot of nice options including the electronic clutch, the kickback brake, the power off for overload protection, electronic soft start switch and uh, some other things. So we're going to be going over it today. And please make sure that you are always wearing safety glasses when you're operating this. It doesn't come with a pair inside the box, and it's definitely a necessity. So please get a nice pair. Uh, this is everything that comes with it. It uh, does not come with the battery. So that's something that's really important that uh, I wanted to bring up. If you look at the uh, box here in the top left corner, it will tell you that it's the tool only. And uh, that's important for this one because, as you see, this one will do the 20, 60, or 120 volt. And so I thought I was good with all my other 20 volt batteries that I had um, with my other power tools that were also DeWalt. But uh, this is the flex volt battery, and it actually does not fit uh, just like the other ones do. So I even tried uh, both of the batteries that I had here, my 20 volt batteries, and as you can see, the little lip comes down on the front of the tool preventing you from using it so in a way I guess that's good so you don't uh, use the wrong battery but just FYI you cannot use your other standard batteries with this one you need the flex volt battery so they're pretty pricey uh, just something to uh, consider as you're shopping for these so here's what was included in the box you have a larger guard so this one will accommodate a bigger disc and I'll show you how to change it out later now uh, you have a nice Allen key, good sized one for some good torque on that. And then the handle, which I'll show you how to install in a minute. Uh, it did come with one free <laughs> sanding disc within the box, but it was at the very bottom of the box. So make sure you don't throw it away. Kind of have to dig for it. And of course the instruction manual, which you should definitely read through. I'm just showing you the basic operation of the tool here. So uh, here is where you can thread it in on either the left hand side or the right hand side, just depending on uh, which hand you want to use. And the battery pack would uh, mount here on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and uh, install the handle. It's very simple, just screws in here. And uh, I'm actually going to remove it again here just to show you how to use some of the other options. So uh, we're going to remove the handle here and I'm going to show you how to move the guard around. You're going to push down on this uh, locking lever here and as you push it you can now rotate it into each of these little boxes. And so that's how it locks into place and you can even go a step further as I'll show you in a minute where we can uh, remove the lever, flip it upside down and it will allow you to ratchet it uh, a little more freely. So I'll show you that in uh, just a minute. So first we're going to move the locking flange off by turning it counterclockwise. And so that will come off. Under that is the unthreaded backing flange. And now to remove the guard we're just going to push down on uh, the little locking lever and we're going to turn it all the way counterclockwise and slightly pull down and you'll see it will come right off. And so that's how we would uh, install our new uh, guard over here. We just put the other one here, line it back up, and it helps to push inward a little bit and hold down that release lever, and it will click, and then you can uh, then push it down and continue to spin it uh, clockwise, and that guard will uh, then go into each of these uh, boxes just like it had before. So as you can see, I'm having to push down on that uh, little lever, and that allows me to spin it to lock it into its different positions. And so now we're going to remove the guard here again just by taking it all the way counterclockwise and pulling down on it. And now we're going to go ahead and remove this lever here. And that's going to allow us to flip the lever over and the head of the lever is different on each end and that allows us to ratchet in a slightly different way. So we're going to go ahead and remove that bolt that's right there. Very simple to do. So we're going to take a T20 Torx. So make sure it's not an Allen. You don't want to strip it out. And we're going to go ahead and remove this bolt. And uh, there is some tension on it from the spring that you see there to the right. And so as you remove this, you're going to want to make sure that the spring is held in place. So I like to take a flathead screwdriver like this and then just hold it there. Now we can remove that bolt and we can take off our lever here. Now we're just going to flip it over 
and now that uh, different head is going to allow us to ratchet this differently. So just uh, use your screwdriver to hold that spring up because it needs to go back uh, how it was pushing on the lever arm. And then when you get it lined up, you can put your bolt back in. Okay, so now just tighten it down in the snug. Now I am going to take us for a quick detour here. If you have a T15 Torx, I'm going to show you something that you can do and it's best to do it with that lever out of the way. So that's what I'm going to show you now. So basically on the nose of uh, the machine here, you have four of these screws here that are T15 Torx. And so what you can do is remove all four of those and you have to be very careful, um, but you can spin this 90 degrees if you wanted to move the head that way for different jobs that you're doing. Now be very careful that you don't separate it from the machine because as it shows here, if it's separated more than an eighth of an inch, the tool must be serviced and reassembled by DeWalt. So I'm not going to get into doing that, but I want to show you it is an option if you want to remove those four uh, bolts and then twist the head, but just keep it all together. Okay, we're going to replace our guard by lining it up, pushing towards the machine, and then uh, just push that lever down a little bit to help you get it into place. And so now you can see it will ratchet every time we turn it without having to push the handle. We only have to push that uh, lever down again if we want it to go backwards. But as you can see now, anytime we want to move it, we just rotate it. So set it up however you'd like the preference. Uh, those are the two options for that. So next we're going to bring in our unthreaded backing flange and as you can see there are notches in the back side of it here and that is what we're going to line up onto our spindle. You'll see the flat edges there as well. So we're going to put this one down and you're just going to have to move it until it locks into its place. Okay, so just make sure the unthreaded backing flange has that lip pointed upward like that. Uh, it wouldn't have locked into place otherwise. And now we're going to bring in our disc and so we're going to put it label side up, so the label's on the opposite side at this point. And next we're going to get our locking flange, so it has the two teeth here that need to go onto the spindle in that same spot. So once you uh, line it up there, you'll spin it clockwise. You can see the lock symbol is clockwise and the unlock is counterclockwise. So spin it on by hand until you can get it uh, pretty firm. Uh, next you'll bring in your Allen key and so uh, basically it shows you the symbol here there's a lock and unlock so as you put it in this and turn it clockwise it will uh, turn it to lock it and then the uh, the counterclockwise motion would unlock the spindle to where you could remove it. Now as you're tightening it here you are going to notice that uh, the entire spindle moves and so what we're going to do is flip this over and you're going to hold down this button which is the spindle lock so you kind of have to move it a little bit back and forth to get it to go down but once you hold that down it's locking it and it allows you to tighten this disc down so that's the way to do it so that the spindle does not move is holding that spindle lock and then tightening this down with the allen key okay so uh, just to show you the machine again real quick here we're going to take a look at the trigger switch. It does have a lock off lever, so it will not operate until you push down on that and then click on it. Uh, so please just uh, read through the manual. This video was just to show you some of the basics. There are a few things I wanted to mention here, so I'll read from the manual. It says, intended use. These heavy duty small angle grinders have been designed for professional grinding, sanding, wire brush, and cut off applications at various work sites. Do not use under wet conditions or in the presence of flammable liquids or gases. These heavy duty small angle grinders are professional power tools. Do not let children come into contact with the tool. Okay, so we really want to keep these out of reach of children. Make sure you're not using them in environments where fumes and fuel can ignite because you will have sparks and all kinds of things flying when you're using this tool. Always wear your safety goggles, that kind of thing. The E-Clutch. This unit is equipped with an E-Clutch, electronic clutch, which in the event of high load, the unit will be shut off to reduce the reaction torque to the user. The switch needs to be cycled, turned on and off, to uh, restart the tool. Kickback Brake. When a pinch, stall, or bind-up event is sensed, the electronic brake engages with maximum force to quickly stop the wheel, reduce the movement of the grinder, and shut the grinder off. The switch needs to be cycled, turned on and off, to restart the tool. Power off overload protection. 
The power supplied to the motor will be reduced in case of a motor overload. With continued motor overload, the tool will shut off. The switch needs to be cycled, turn on and off to restart the tool. The tool will power off each time the current load reaches the overload current value, uh, which is the motor burn up point. If continued overload shutdowns occur, apply less force, wait on the tool uh, until the tool will function without overload engaging. Electronic soft start. This feature limits the initial startup speed, allowing the tool to build up to full speed gradually over one second period of time. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please check the video description for the other videos on tools that I've made and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Um, please also refer to the owner's manual. That's your true guide. I'm just showing you kind of a hands-on uh, what's involved with the machine, but uh, you need to take the responsibility yourself to read through the entire manual. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.